Martina for the invitation and all the organizers for the organizing this program. And this is the um, first time in Pisa. Uh, so I tried to see traces of the Fibonacci the sequence that I could see. Uh, so, as, as she said, uh, where well, Eka algebra are very well known and uh, are proven to have a lot of applications and uh, very interesting properties in representation theory, arithmetic, and so on. So, Eka algebra, no, usual Eka algebra for reductive groups. And uh, the goal of this talk is to explain a definition, which is a generalization to Katzmudi group of. Uh, because uh, algebra, there will, there will be two uh, different, so spherical and uh, Iwari Eka. And uh, you see that um, there are some difficulties, it's always the case with the Katsumi group, but somehow one can still say something. So, maybe, maybe I recall Katsumi group. So um, <coughs> G will be a Cassini group. Over. So I will have a field of um, um, local field with a valuation of the graph, and inside it I will have a ring of integers and the. Only one maximum ideal. And so you may think of uh, F. Yeah, and I, I require also that um, the um, cardinality of the residue field is Q. A number. Of, uh, and then uh, you can think of uh, F to be uh, FQ of T. The, one power series in one, var one variable with a coefficient in the okay. uh, And something that might, one might keep in mind. And, uh, okay, so I will give examples of such groups, but at the beginning I will uh, start with some definition and uh, a notation. So this is a maximal torus. And uh, I will also need the core weight or core character. So everything is defined over uh, F. And uh, inside this, I will have the dominant. So these are the core weight or core characters. And there are some dominant core weights. And because of Kakudi, uh, there are two pluses here. We'll see why in a moment. Uh, okay, what do I need? Ah, yes. Uh, maybe here, yeah, I wrote so. But yes. Okay, so as usual, these are the simple roots of uh, P and G. And uh, I will denote by Q. Plus church, plus by plus. Church is what uh, is the top now. Two plus church is the uh, positive co weight, the co weight matrix. The classical. And uh, of course, what I need, the y group. So, uh, I think this is, we'll see. Ah, yes, and I fixed a uh, uniformizer here of my uh, field. Generator of the, uh, yeah, here. So in this case, it's T. Okay, now let's do examples. <laughs> So the, the first one is uh, classical, so a Kasmudi group uh, encompasses the, the class of Kasmudi group 
and compared to the class of a uh, relative group, or maybe I can think of a relative group, and so maybe one group that is uh, easy is SLNF, so the other uh, matrices uh, coefficient in F. In this, the group K, no, no, I forgot to say something. Okay, I read it here. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so in a, in a, we will define some subgroups of uh, G and uh, I go K and I go I, to the I, uh, the curvy I, which all contain the T, all, all defined over I, I mean, uh, yeah. And um, yes. Yes, we will define such subgroup such <laughs> that uh, uh, the K will be used to have some kind of uh, so lambda is a, a, a co-character so you can think of uh, if you have a, the P to the power of lambda is the image of, uh, <coughs> of pi inside uh, T and so you can think about this and think about this uh, double class and this is in some cases the carton decomposition of G G is defined over F but in the Casimir case the uh, carton decomposition doesn't work so it's only a sub semi group of G Okay. And then, uh, so what in this case? And in, in this case, of course, uh, G plus, uh, the Cartan decomposition holds. In this case, uh, G plus is equal to G. And uh, the group K is just SLN of O. And the group I is the Iwari. It's just the subgroup of all matrices that. <coughs> Entries over the diagonal are in O and below the diagonal in M, so that it reduces to the <coughs> uh, triangular, upper triangular matrices modulo M. Okay, and then this is very the classical situation. So this is the case of uh, relative groups. So the first uh, example of um, a Casimir group we need to take G to be a uh, affine Casimir group. So it's built with, uh, starting with um, a loop group. So you start with a loop group, Let, let's stick to SLN. Okay. And you have two uh, extension if you want to have a affine Casimir group. So there is a rotating the loop and the central extension. So this is the G <coughs> over F, the affine Casimir group. So this is the first example after relative group. And uh, yeah, of course in this case, uh, G plus already in this case, G plus already in SL2 case, uh, G plus is not equal to G. So you, you, you will see a sort of definition in the of G plus, you, you will understand why this is only a sort of definition because there was one big piece of, uh, of the story that I want to define. And you'll see why right? this is the, the main construction. And so, okay, uh, what, what is K? Yes, K is, um, so if you think on an anal analogy to this, then um, so I give this example because you can write uh, explicitly what K is and so you can keep that in mind for the rest of the talk. So what is S? This is uh, SLN. So K, okay, you just replace F by O. <coughs> so this is K. And what is um, I? So inside this, you have the gen generalization of the theory subgroup. As in this case, you can describe it in terms of matrices. So here you put uh, 
the analog of uh, what you want to have if you reduce modulo z, modulo m, sorry. And then uh, here, so here you have z, z, z times o z plus the same thing, n times over minus one. As in, and then that has to be made of the generalization of this. If you let, if you look modulo n, or for example in here, you let just let t equal to zero. If you let t equal to zero, then you get theta. And you get something uh, polynomial, and here a polynomial z, which will be hit if you, after that, let z equal to zero. Mm -hmm. So that, this is uh, an analogy here. And here, g plus, uh, I can say a bit of something of g plus, it is generated by um, k, the central. F theta and the G in G such that phi of G is positive. What is phi of G? Phi of G is um, a map from G to Z going to F. And so F you have a, a valuation and so this is uh, A F G maps to F and to that the valuation of F. Okay, so you can, in this case, in the case of uh, affine customary group, one can describe explicitly uh, what are both groups. But there are also, okay, there are also um, a lot of uh, other customary group. And uh, so, for example, uh, uh, hyperbolic uh, customary group, etc. Et so they are built out of the uh, the algebra and then uh, can define those groups by generator and relation and, well. and now uh, okay so in your notations the, the diagonal line the diagonal is equal to the top part yes means that uh, on the diagonal the on the diagonal you have uh, well it has to be a matrix in SLM and uh, over the diagonal you have something over, over including the including the diagonal yeah. but because you have SLM it could say something about the values in the diagonal okay so now uh, um, these are the pictures of the groups and we want to say something about uh, Hecker algebras. So this is the introduction kind of. Oh, so you have to remember those notations. And uh, <laughs> so algebra. So what 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 will be the algebra? So you will have a spherical algebra, and this will be more or less the function on uh, the double yeah because in general the Cartan decomposition is not true we have to use this g plus to do this function and so this means almost finite because if we are we will be looking at functions with almost almost finite support and uh, maybe say That uh, it's, so this this was defined for affine G Graveman and Kastan and uh, and uh, <coughs> And we uh, for general G I did uh, by myself and here also uh, in 2014. And uh, so it's a kind of uh, race because then we also have the 
You are worried. Uh, I worry. Hacker. So to say. And so this, this, this will be the function with finite support of the double coset uh, modulo i. And, uh, and this is also for a fine, in order to win the race, they added some, 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 some other guy. The Bremerman has done. And Pat Snake. Uh, did this in uh, 2014, uh, quite recently. And uh, well, what I will explain today is also something we are uh, currently writing with. Uh, we also have some other people, and with uh, Nicole Bartoutens, myself, and Rousseau. We did the general. So to define this algebra and to study them and to, for example, uh, they, they use uh, the algebraic geometry to define this algebra and to prove uh, Satake isomorphism, whereas we use, uh, uh, what I will explain, uh, kind of uh, generalization of uh, building theory to define it. So now I'll proceed and I'll explain uh, what is the generalization of a Buryatid building for a classical group, and then I will explain I will use this, uh, this uh, kind of building to define the algebra. <coughs> Did you explain all the spiral orders or are you going to? No, I'm going, I will explain it here. It will be. Uh, Okay, so now uh, there's an unfortunate name, which is uh, also not so easy to pronounce for French, right? Which is Hovel, and uh, it's supposed to be a translation of uh, Mazur in Mazur, and this is the name we gave in French, Mazur, and uh, also in English. Translation with uh, power of this uh, situation of this uh, space. Uh, yeah, Guy Rousseau did his PhD with uh, Michel de Mazur, and so he wanted to call it Mazur. And then we found a translation in some small dictionary with Hovel. But then we re realized that uh, Hovel is, uh, for example, in book by Dickens, or something, <coughs> the Hovel is really something. Uh, very, very in bad situation. It's, uh, it's not even a house, it's a more like a shelter for, for poor people. And so, uh, yeah, but it's, uh, but is it's it a way to. Realization of buildings? Yes. Buildings? We have this building. Yes. Okay. But we don't plan for a very big originality because we took the same definition. So if you already saw the definition of a Buratis building, then you just take the same definition and go to the uh, group. You lose a very important uh, axiom, which is that uh, in a building, any two points are always in the same apartment, which is not uh, true anymore. OK, so I already said it. So there is a standard apartment in this uh, kind of building, uh, which is, uh, well, just uh, so you remember the Y, which are the co-character. It is a, a, a finite generated Z lattice, so you tensor with R, and then you get a finite dimensional R vector space. So it's very nice. Inside this, you have the uh, fundamental chamber. Wave chamber. And uh, so the the standard apartment is this, 
vector space are fine space, but we fix always uh, zero, so it's uh, that this vector space plus some simplicial structure. And uh, so I don't want to define explicitly what the simplicial structure is, but uh, maybe I do an example. Right. For bread is building, it's uh, relatively easy. So maybe take an example. Uh, the first example is uh, let's take SL3 so that we can draw something. So I can. So, so, sorry, if I have the simple root of the Cassini group, and why are the weights. This is the, these are the simple roots yes. of the Cassini group. And, and why, uh, why is um, uh, co weight like this? You have the, the, the set of weights so that the matrix is not degenerated? No. It's generated by, as a vector space by R5? Yes. Okay. So this is. Uh, so, so the group is uh, uh, over F, which is a local field, and uh, so this is this. Okay, so now uh, mark here. So here is easy for the easy for some sense. Uh, in comparison to the customer case. So so if you, uh, the <coughs> torus, uh, maximum torus of the diagonal matrices, so then uh, it's what dimension. <coughs> and so you have uh, the the uh, preferred examples of uh, a lot of people, it's uh, this one, so you draw this and then uh, what you do, you affinize the situation. So inside this, of course, you have the, so this is the core weight, uh, so this is the A, the Y, and then you have the core weight, the, the core weight like this, inside this, and you affinize according to this. So what you get is something like that. So how many alphas do you get here? How many what? Alphas. Alphas, two. This is alpha one church and this is alpha two church. And then you get this, this, etc. And the simplicial structure comes together with these hyperplanes, so you remove the hyperplanes and then you, you get the uh, high course and then you get to write the faces. Of the you don't see that when you draw? What? You can. Yes, of course, yes. I should I should do it. Yeah. It's here. Yeah. Yeah. And zero is here. It will be important for later purpose. And so uh, and this one is called this I code is called C naught or C zero. And uh, I cheated because I stopped. Is so much of W? Is it going to be finite in this example? W, the Y group. Yes. What is the Y group here? <coughs> the Y group here is just S3. So these extra mirrors so far do not play the role, right? Yes, they play the role to define the simplicial structure. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, and now uh, so this is a picture of uh, the first example you may think of is uh, so this is SL two. So I would say the how can I write it? At the um, affine uh, Cassini group SL two, and uh, so the, in, in in here you have uh, the torus is of dimension three. And, uh, but, uh, well, this is a, uh, okay. right. right, this is the dimension, right, rank three, and the, uh, the dimension of A over R is three. Then I draw here only two dimensions. There is uh, one uh, central dimension which uh, goes out the board. That's the C, goes out the board. The delta is uh, this uh, dimension, and there's uh, alpha somewhere. 
And so you have this uh, this white uh, hyperplane arrangement. So here, here, here you have already an infinite, so infinitely many of such uh, hyperplanes, and now you affinize it. <laughs> yes, and you affinize it according to the coroot lattice, and so what you get. It's somehow a bit. Well, it's not. Well, one get you get used to after a while. <laughs> but if you see, you're starting to see that if you if you do this, well, I want I stop. I will stop. If you do this uh, with all the hyperplanes, since you have uh, infinitely many hyperplanes, then you get uh, dense hyperplane. Arrangement. Which is bad here in Peter. David is not yet working on hyperplane arrangements. So you, that you cannot do that much, but you can still have some kind of simplistic structure. And now you have to think of uh, alcos as being something attached. So you, you have a zero, and you have also uh, uh, vertices. So the the the, the Cool white lattice are uh, vertices, and so uh, uh, an alcove is something attached to a, a vertex and, and, a di and a chamber and a direction. So, what, what is the, the chamber here? The chamber is there, <coughs> the dominant chamber, and, uh, and it's uh, not a set, it's, the, it's a filter. So, it's, uh, so you take uh, all the neighborhood. Of uh, your point x and uh, intersect it with this direction, and so you have something uh, infinitesimal that we take as alcohol. So that's the first part news. But we still have like uh, neighboring alcohols, like a Jansen? No, they, yeah. this is not uh, very connected. You cannot go, so here, if you are here and here. Then there is a path going there, and it makes sense. And there it doesn't make sense anymore. <coughs> and you also have, uh, yeah, okay, so it's a bit complicated, but you can do, still do something. So this is the uh, yes, and now. Of course, this is only the, the apartment. Uh, or maybe then I have a piece, one more piece of uh, notation that we have read here. You have the teeth cone. Uh, you translate with the action. Of course, W is acting on, on, uh, on this, and then you can move the fundamental chamber. So here, if you move the fundamental chamber, you get everything. And here, if you move the fundamental chamber, then you get uh, the upper high plane. And this line doesn't belong to it. And in <coughs> hyperbolic examples, you really have a problem. OK. And then, uh, yes. And then there is a pre-order associated to this cone, and to any cone, actually. So you say, uh, x is smaller than y if y minus x belong to this cone. OK. And now, <coughs> this is over. So this is uh, where I'm cheating because I won't define this properly. And uh, it's, uh, it's something attached to g and to f. Of course, you can change. I started with a group defined over f, but you can have a custom group, which is a kind of schemes, and define over any field, and change the field, etc. And um, so you, you want to, to have a space covered by an apartment. So and, and any apartment is isometric to the one you have in mind here. And so you, want, you have to glue this uh, apartment. So 
what you take is uh, you take g of f times a, so you have a huge bunch of uh, apartments, and you glue them together. Uh, well, I can say, but I doesn't say that much. Or maybe what is the, this equivalence relation? So if there exists an n in the normalizer of the torus yeah. or a definable f such that uh, y uh, okay so so you, you consider this group you have to show that this group acts on your apartment so that you can move the points x and y and you require you, you define this equivalence relation like that and you want that g minus 1 h n belong to but they belong to this uh, well, the product belong to this thing which is a subgroup of g that you have to define before setting this definition and to pray that it realizes the right thing so this is where the half part is done so in the in the its case you define it using the hypotenuse and the values of the alphas etc et so in this case you do also so but um, since we have seen that the simple structure is not that nice, then you have some positive and negative, and then you have to do them together and get a, a bigger group, etc. Et so it's a bit difficult to define those groups. But at least, what is the index of this group? X? Is it X? Or? X, yeah. Mm -hmm. P hat of X. P hat of X. And they are called parahoric subgroups. But you have to define them, in order to define the, the hover, you have to define them for any uh, filter in the apartment, and this is uh, difficult. But, okay, so I, I have to teach to cheat on this, because otherwise uh, I won't be finished today with the talk. And uh, just a remark, if G is reductive, then I is a, a relative building. Um, there is an action of G on the building, and uh, if you move the standard apartment, then you get all the apartments, and this uh, they are all uh, isometric to to that or that. Uh, and of course, the things you defined before, they are the nice stabilizer of the action of the building, uh, of the, building, of the uh, group on the forward. And uh, the, the second bad news is that two points are not always in the same apartment. There's a kind of uh, uh, it's a bit like in uh, 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 Lawrence or uh, the, um, that you have the light cone and outside the light cone you have, the, there you have the, this uh, teeth cone, the positive teeth cone and the negative teeth cone and outside there's uh, that region where you don't know what's happening. But that's this a good news. Yes. Does it mean A is a space? And it means that uh, I didn't say that A is included uh, in here with this, and then you can uh, and the action I didn't say it, uh, the action of G is uh, acting on the first uh, by multiplication on the left on the first factor. This action. Just multiply here and it goes to a concrete check. 
So you move this one sits inside the wall and you move it with the element of the So uh, what we get with uh, Rousseau is that um, the pre-order um, on A extends to uh, an invariant, a G invariant pre-order on the orbit. And this is uh, the good news. Uh, if you have two points in the hover, which are one is smaller than the other for this uh, extended uh, free order, then they belong to the same apartment. So that there is an apartment uh, that contains those two points. I still don't understand. We have an equality y equals n times x, right? And y and x are real vectors, by definition. Yes. And n has coefficients in the local field, right? Yes. So what does it mean? It's a normalizer. Yeah, this is, an, uh, yes, this is what I said already. Uh, so you have to show that this, this one with, is called n acts on A. Uh, so uh, it acts by uh, translation and uh, right, um, reflections. Yes, taken the norm associated with, with this type of things. So, uh, okay. yes, so in, inside of this you have the, the, the because you, you want to normalize the torus, so you have the reflections. The one in, in white, and uh, because it's also a torus for F, then you also have all the reflections associated to all this other thing. <coughs> ah, okay. Yes, and now, well, uh, in the few minutes left, I will define the algebra, the hacker algebra. Now algebra, so it's uh, soft out, uh, really quick. Uh, okay. So what is K? So I promised that uh, I would define K, but uh, not really because I didn't really define the, the whole. So, uh, but then once you uh, below, when to yeah. Uh, you have to accept, and once you accept, then K is the stabilizer for the action of J of uh, zero. Zero is like this. And uh, G plus uh, are those of G. So I, I explained a description for a fine case, but in general, you can uh, look at those elements that move zero to something which is um, greater for this. Uh, Order. And because of the, this is a GMRN pre-order, this is a, a sub group of G. And then you have the Cartan decomposition. On one side, these are the vertices of uh, type 0, which are the orbit of G plus of uh, O. And on the other side, uh, this is this. And uh, one can show that you have this uh on the composition. And uh, <coughs> I will define the algebra for
So now we, uh, I will explain. We are almost, almost finite. So H will be the um, You can take this in any, let's say, Z, uh, in any ring. And um, the support of F, so the elements where this is uh, the A lambda is non zero, uh, is included in the finite union and, and finite union of some thing like this. <coughs> Well, those new I <coughs> Actually, if you think of this, uh, it, it says that you allow infinity in the central direction. So you have this direction pointing out, out, the Y plus plus are the weight inside the fundamental chamber. And so you have this chamber there, and then you allow uh, or minus in the direction, infinity in minus the central dimension. So this is the almost a finite condition. And uh, what is C lambda? C lambda is a is a function. This is more or less the characteristic function of uh, this. Uh, Double class, but I ex express it in, a, in this uh, kind of fancy way. Um, it's uh, one if uh, x and y. So this uh, smaller equal means that x we look at the pair of the pair of elements where x is smaller equal to y, and so we are in a situation that they are in the same apartment, and so they can bring to they can. You can bring back y minus x, the, vec the vector y minus x, into the fundamental uh, chamber uh, with some element in uh, W in the uh, apartment where x and y live. Okay? And zero otherwise. So, more or less, it says that. Uh, this is the this function is defined is equal to one if they are in relative position lambda and zero on the y. And then you look at uh, almost finite um, sums or uh, com linear combination of such functions, and the theorem is. <coughs> H is a algebra. So you have to show something. Come maybe I can say. Ah, yes. I just write the same thing. Oh, maybe I write it. Yeah, so this is from me and uh, Rousseau. Uh, this is an algebra for the convolution product. So the, the way I write it allow me to have this fancy way that to, to use the, the product like this. So if you have f and g such thing, then you will say that the value on, the, on this is given by the sum of all z that are between x and y of f, x, z, and g. And this is the product in the ring you are writing. And such a product is always uh, associative. So you have to show that it's defined. Uh, it's like, uh, and it's, uh, not so obvious also that this is not too bad. But it stays almost finite. Uh, it, it, it stays. And uh, second. 
we can compute the um, structure, the constant structure. Okay, and what are these numbers? There are the nice uh, interpretation in terms of the building or the hole. They are, this is the number of triangles where well, here you have um, uh, x, or maybe I call it c, uh, and this is some x, z, or maybe 0, which is x, and this is u, and this is the length kind of like lambda and this is kind of like mu. So you have triangles like that and you count them for any uh, z and between 0 and uh, mu and it gives you this and this is a polynomial in q and uh, we have an explicit no formula, which resembles a formula like a whole formula for the But there is no Q. Where is Q coming from? Ah, where is Q coming from? So if you uh, remember the Q at the, the, um, the cardinality of the residue field, ah, the beginning, uh -huh. the very beginning, and uh, the thing what you have is if you want to draw, so maybe I draw a building for you. In case G, so you will see where Q is. In case G is SL2 of F2. <coughs> so in this case, you may, might already know what the building is. Uh, that looks like this. So it's a. Uh, It's a tree with uh, valency 3, so the um, cardinality of the um, projective line, the projective uh, space of uh, the field. And so the Q uh, right here, so that uh, here if you, uh, if you think of the, uh, the where is the apartment here, the apartment is one of these uh, mm -hmm. lines, for example. And so the, we have the copy of all these lines and then glue them together and the, the definition of the over of the building uh, makes so that uh, they glue together and gives you this uh, tree. And so, <coughs> the, if you want to count such triangles, so you start from here and then you, are, you, 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 you want to go somewhere and then each time you have a choice and you, this is where the cube comes in. And so this is generalized in, uh, in the whole picture. And uh, so I have to stop. So uh, unfortunately, I promised uh, you are reactive, but you know that uh, promises are always. Les promesses n'engagent que ceux qui les écoutent. So I, I'm sorry because my time is over. So I stop just to say uh, we have um, uh, just two words to finish. Um, we have um, an unequal parameter. Uh, definition of this uh, of, of this algebra, so we can do unequal parameters, but starting not from a group but for from the um, the co-weight lattice, and then uh, do with unequal parameters. And uh, the picture with the um, Iwari hack is almost the same. Instead of the vertices, we take the arcs and we define some uh, uh, function like this. And instead of k, we take i. We don't have any almost finite support condition anymore, so finite support, and then some kind of uh, theorem like this, but um, uh, without an explicit formula for the uh, constant. We know that there are polynomials in Q, but we don't know how to compute them in general, only for a, a regular case, so to say. And thank you for your attention.